he has faced a lot of hardships believing in his own innocence and he desired the truth so the first one is he has faced a lot of hardships why because of believing in his own innocence so we have ing over here the second clause is he has faced a lot of hardships why because he desired the truth so we have desired which is non ing so we basically need to change it into the ing form of verb so the full and final answer would be he has faced a lot of hardships believing in his own innocence and desiring the truth minus he so that would be it this intense so uh that we have more or less understood what exactly do we mean by parallelism with the given examples let's move one step ahead over here so we have again four sentences that we can see over here i love my father my mother and my sister this sentence uh second sentence again i love my father mother and sister okay going back to the previous slide that we had about delhi amritsar and shimla over here we had two options available the first option was he traveled to delhi to amritsar and to shimla that was how we distributed two equally for all the three sent uh, for, for all the three cities we can also we could also go on the other way around where we write or re retain two for just the first clause and we cancel out two for the remaining two clauses so that was the option that we had so going by how this was correct so in that uh, in that same uh, way in that same fashion what we can do over here is i love my father my mother and my sister the my just like two this is distributed equally for all the three clauses so this makes which which makes it all correct in the second sentence i love my father mother and sister so the my over here is written only for the first with the first clause second there's no my third there's no my which was again true when it when uh, we were discussing about the three cities so this again is correct the uh, the assumption that we uh, we 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 make over here is the my over here is being taken common with the first clause itself so there's my over here invisible my another invisible my over here or we can be less subtle and keep on writing my over here and over here as well right so either way it works so both the first both the sentences the first two sentences they are correct coming to the third or the fourth one In the third one i love my father and my mother In the fourth one i love my father and mother so there's no my in the second clause now with this one that we have over here only the third sentence is correct the fourth one is grammatically incorrect why because when it comes to the whole business of taking things common this is applicable for any sentence any sentences that have more than two clauses meaning which that this particular sentence has 1 2 3 so we have three clauses basically it has more than two clauses so we can take common or we can not take common either way we have two choices available for us over here we haven't taken common which is correct over here we have taken it common which is again correct but in the third and fourth sentences that we have we have just two clauses one and two one and two so when we have just two clauses two clauses over here in that case we have only one option and that option is to distribute whatever component that is my or two whichever that is equally for both the clauses we can in no way take anything common when it comes to two clauses so this is the broader understanding uh or when it comes to parallelism now that we have uh, finally understood what exactly do we, do we mean by parallelism with uh, sufficient examples now let's finally try to connect the idea of parallelism with conjunction 
So conjunction has already explained. It is anything that is used to join or connect two or more sentences. Now, talking about conjunction, uh, there are three types of conjunctions. The first one is coordinating conjunction. The second one is correlative. The third one, which I have not written it, and there's a reason why it is not mentioned over here in the slide. But just for the record, the third conjunction is the third type of conjunction that would be subordinating conjunction. So we have three types of conjunction. The first one is coordinating conjunction. The second one is correlative. The third one is subordinating conjunction, which is not very important. And we'll come to it. Why is it not very important from the point of view of parallel structures or parallelism? So the first uh, first things first, when it comes to coordinating conjunction, the idea is a coordinate conjunction. There are seven types of conjunctions that fall under the gamut of coordinating conjunction. And there you have fanboys. So fanboys, this is one of the easier acronyms to remember uh, in order to basically list down the different types of conjunctions that we have, which basically fall under the category of coordinating conjunction. Fanboys, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. These are basically coordinating conjunctions that we have over here. So any sentence, any single, any sentence whatsoever, uh, which is being joined or connected by any one of these conjunctions. In that particular sentence, parallel structures or parallelism is something that we need to watch out for. So we need to maintain parallel structure. If we are using any one of these conjunctions that we have, like and we have used. So uh, had we used uh, for, nor, but, or, yet, so, we would have followed the same order. We would have maintained parallelism through and through. Now, coming to correlative conjunction. So correlative conjunction, The uh, this is actually easy to demarcate. This is, is easy to uh, distinguish between a coordinating conjunction and a correlative conjunction. Why? Because when it comes to correlative conjunction, as the word suggests, this basically refers to those conjunctions that come in pairs, that basically come in pairs, that we can see over here. Uh, one is over here, either or. So uh, first and foremost, when it comes to correlative conjunction, is that it basically refers to, uh, it is only, uh, it is ideally true for just two clauses. When it comes to coordinating, as we have seen in the previous two slides, uh, we can have two clauses, we can have three clauses, or in some cases, we can even have four or five clauses. Doesn't matter. The list can go on and on and on. But when it comes to correlative conjunction, ideally, again, exceptions are always there. But ideally, when it comes to correlative conjunction, the whole idea is we have just two clauses. Now, as it is, be, as, is a con, as it is a conjunction that is mostly focused on pairs. So if one clause has either, the second clause needs to have an or. If one clause has neither, the second clause needs to have an or. Not only, but also both and. The whole idea is if one clause has neither and the other clause does not have a nor, that sentence is basically having a faulty parallel structure. Similarly, this one is actually very, very common, not only but also. This is very common and this gets often asked uh, when it comes to exams. So if one sentence, if one sentence, one clause happens to have not only the subsequent clause needs to have but also. Uh, both and, whether or, not no sooner than, as as, more than, so on and so forth. So these are basically uh, some ideas, uh, so some examples of correlative conjunctions that we can see over here. Now, uh, the last one is also important. If plus had plus past participle. If had past participle basically refers to the third form of verb. So if one clause has this particular arrangement, the second clause definitely needs to have would plus have plus past participle over here. So all in all, what we have understood so far is any sentence, any particular, any sentences that we know of, if they are using a 
coordinating conjunction, which would be fanboys, or they're using correlative conjunction, all the clauses, they need to be parallel, they need to be uniform, they need to be equal. That's the whole idea. Now, coming to the last one that we have, which is subordinating conjunction. So subordinating, how do we really distinguish or how do we really identify what uh, exactly is subordinating? So there's a very simple technique in order to in order to figure out what exactly uh, uh, is a subordinating conjunction. Now we know coordinating conjunction, fanboys. So we just have seven conjunctions, seven types, seven conjunctions that we have as far as this one is concerned. With correlative, again, it is easy because it mainly focuses on pairs. So there we have. So what other conjunctions we are left with? That would be your subordinating conjunction. So any other conjunctions that are not fanboys and that are not basically focusing on pairs by default those conjunctions would be subordinating for example because we know because is a conjunction since another example of uh, a, a, another example of a conjunction we can also have uh, although however moreover, though, so on and so forth. The list can go on and on and on, right? So idea of it is we have because, this because, of course, this cannot be correlative conjunction. So that is out of the picture. Because can it be a coordinating conjunction? We have fan, we have a B in fanboys, but this B stands for but. So because this is a subordinating conjunction. We have an S in fanboys again, but this S, it stands for so, so which makes since a subordinating conjunction. Although we have an A, we have an A over here, but then A is for and. So again, although this will be a subordinating conjunction. So this is actually the whole point of it. We can easily demarcate, we can easily distinguish between a coordinating conjunction and a subordinating conjunction. Coordinating is basically fanboys that we have over here. For and not but or yet and so. Subordinating any other conjunctions which are not fanboys. Now, uh, the reason why we need we also need to perhaps have some basic idea about subordinating conjunction is because when it comes to subordinate conjunction, we have the liberty of following parallelism or not following parallelism. Uh, just to give you an example, what we can see over here is, uh, let's say, since, because it's already established that since this is a subordinating conjunction, so what we can do is, let's just uh, write a sentence which, does, which uses since as a conjunction. So a sentence, one sentence could be, I did not come for the for the session since i have not been keeping well over here yes so since is what we have over here which means we have two clauses the first clause i did not come for the session did not come non-ing why because i have not been keeping well so we have ing over here so this is fine had it been a fanboys had it been a correlative conjunction this would have been outrightly wrong from the very word go itself so with when it comes to subordinate conjunction that is absolutely fine we can go either way so that is all uh, that we have over here when it comes to parallelism. So that's it. So thank you.